Yeah. So we'll talk sort of briefly today about uh, PPI in general, but also in terms of PPI support offered by RDS. And although I'll use RDS Northwest as a, an exemplar, um, obviously respective regional RDSs will have equivalent support. Um, okay, so next slide, please. So in respect of kind of RDS assistance with PPI, uh, obviously we have two phases. Obviously the primary connection is with um, your assigned advisor. So if you're in receipt of um, NIH RDS advice, you'll be assigned a, an advisor and obviously they can kind of assist you in planning your PPI. Uh, beyond that, of course, is there also each region has a team of specialty advisors. So I'm one of those for the Northwest and you can uh, and we often kind of meet with uh, RDS clients one-to-one um, uh, -to, -one to kind of discuss PPI needs. Uh, obviously, each RDS region has its own website and will also therefore have um, uh, PPI resources that can be accessed through that. Uh, and also beyond that, of course, is the NIHR kind of evidence centre website that they've just launched, which also has searchable uh, PPI resources on it. Uh, and also another way in which uh, the RDS can uh, assist in, in, in the kind of the planning of PPI uh, is with what's called the RDS Public Involvement Fund Scheme, uh, which I'm going to kind of concentrate on a little bit more uh, to kind of uh, to give an overview of. And I said, and as I said, obviously that's uh, sort of in common to all RDS regions. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so as you say, it's, it's, I think obviously we, we, we have from the, sort of the, the previous uh, uh, previous presentation, it's good to involve, uh, obviously having PPI involved in the project is uh, is extremely important and obviously a requirement for funders. Uh, and, and we can think of PPI as existing in two broad stages. So there's, there's, there's sort of the, the PPI that you do when you're planning the construction of your um, your, your, your project and your grant application that kind of feeds into that construction process. And then there's the kind of the, the second phase, which is the PPI that you embed in that project, in that grant application, which you're costing. Um, so in the case of the uh, sort of PPI advising, PPI, so general PPI advice from your kind of advisors can help with both of those phases. Um, but in respect of the PPI fund, uh, which RDS offers, uh, that's primarily aimed at that first phase, the, the PPI that you do to feed into the construction of that, that project, that funding application and so on. And I think it's good just as a general thought to kind of ensure that you're, you do that fairly early on so you can kind of have that PPI process and, and have that kind of authentic feed in into what you're into, your, into the construction of your of your of your funding application uh, and again in terms of, of, of accessing the fund uh, there'll be more specific details in your respective regional rds website as to how to actually access the fund uh, the process they used uh, and also thinking about that sort of perhaps in as, as, as a just general terms uh, it, it strikes me that as a general rule of thumb when you're thinking about kind of that those ppi activities if when you're when you're thinking about PPI and the process and the activities you're you're designing, um, if you if you if you if you've come up with something that kind of looks like it needs to go to a research ethics committee, then it's probably not a PPI activity. But well, that's not to say that there may be ethical issues and, and, and kind of ethical legal issues around PPI activities. So, for example, if you're if you're seeking to carry out PPI with children, then you may need um, consent from guardians and so on. Um, but as, as I said, it's a general rule of thumb. Okay, next slide, please. So as I said, yeah, the um, uh, the, the sort of PPI funds, and there's a commonality here, uh, cross regional commonality here. It's for, um, as I said, developing proposals for national peer reviewed open core fundings. Um, you have to be in receipt of RDS advice to access that funding. And it's available at any stage prior to final submission, although we, we would strongly recommend uh, that you use it, you apply and you do it in the early phase of your, your grant so it can feed into the kind of the, the writing and construction of your project. So obviously, often the kind of the early stages preparatory work is, is kind of more useful. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, 
Okay, so yeah, so it can be used for um, uh, what we said here is it can be used for a variety of for supporting PPI activity. Okay, so it's, it's a list there. But I think, as I said, the important thing is it's not for research itself. There's a general view, therefore, that the PPI that you are using the fund for, i.e., the that first phase that I talked about where you're using PPI to kind of feed into the construction of your, your project proposal. Okay, that's what you're using it for. It's not for research itself. Uh, and in addition, of course, you can use that to think about and inform the kind of PPI activities that you're going to cost into your funding application. But I think the important thing is that it's not for the research itself. It's for supporting PPI. And I think there's some, some key points there in terms of Kind of ensuring reimbursement and involvement so i mean as, as a minimum you know the idea is that you know no one who contributes to your ppi activities should be out of pocket they should be remunerated for their expenses um but in addition to that people may may factor in thank you payments as well often i think it's common for people to perhaps give participant vouchers as a sort of a, as a kind of symbolic thank you as well um but as i said it's it's for the planning of ppi not for research itself as a kind of a separate thing there. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so normally uh, the maximum is £350. And um, obviously when you're applying for your uh, fund, obviously respective regions will have a different process. But generally speaking, um, you'll obviously the, the, the maximum amount will be about £350. And you'll be asked when you're kind of putting in your PIF application, um, to set in a breakdown of costs, an overview of the planned activity, and so on. So it's almost like I'd have a mini, uh, a mini uh, funding application, if you like. Um, but it should be involved in these sorts of things so that when it's assessed for whether it's going to be awarded or not, obviously the, the, the person reviewing it has a clear idea of, of what you're doing and, and how much money you're applying for and where that money's going. Okay, next slide, please. So obviously here we go in the, in the northwest as an example of that. So um, we require obviously in addition to the kind of the, the PI funding application, the kind of the PIP application as it were, uh, which we try to turn around in about six weeks. Um, we also ask for perhaps a short evaluation of the PI event uh, is returned as part of the board. So once you've done that kind of phase one PI kind of planning that's fed into your into your application construction, you kind of come back and tell us how it's gone and, and what you did. And as I said, it's 300, in, in the Northwest, it's 350 pound maximum. In exceptional cases, we will allow uh, applications over this, but it is in exceptional cases, because obviously we have to mine the budget of the fund uh, in, in its entirety. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Okay, and when we're thinking about uh, public involvement activities, obviously there's a, yeah, you know, when you're when you're thinking about constructing, I've already kind of we've talked about the fact that there may be, you know, it, it's something different to research. Uh, and there's a good list here, of kind of the, the things to think about when you're thinking about kind of, you know, who to involve, who's going to lead it, how are you going to organise it? Is it going to be face to face or over Zoom? Uh, do people need to be supported in that? Uh, and I think one key point I would point out is is the idea of burden. So what is it that you're actually asking your PI uh, PPI contributors to do? And is that is that too burdensome? Uh, have you constructed it so it isn't? So if, you know, if you're asking them to attend you know, lots of meetings, read lots of documents, well, is that too is that too much of a burden? Uh, but also in terms of that, that's linked to remuneration as well. Do you think that what you are giving them in recompense for what they're doing is fair? And obviously, there's guidance, and obviously in, in the um, in the chat functions, that's that's already uh, there's, there's guidance that's been produced by the NHR in terms of recommended payment structures. But again, that can be something you can talk to um, uh, about with your with your individual case advisor. Okay, next slide, please. And here is just uh, some um, some reference documents that people might be able to make use of uh, uh, in terms of plan planning and organising their you know, organising your kind of when you're thinking about public involvement. Okay, and I'm, time's up, so I'll leave it there. Thank you.